Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ramp Studio Comics, and today's video is going to be on some conceptual drawing, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, I've got a template here in the background that I made just by overlaying, you know, a bunch of different textures, and uh, I use that as kind of a base to do stuff like this, but what the, uh, what this video is going to be about is to show you how you might draw some weird conceptual stuff like you see here, a little, uh, creepy spider dog or whatever that is rat dog and a uh, little alien dude and you see I even save like some little clips like that if I'm working out some ideas you know this different style of head stuff like that I'll, I'll just kind of throw that in and I don't know that we're gonna work on alien creatures like this but I wanted to show you the process and we'll go ahead and you know paint up something maybe I was thinking possibly a weapon or something first I'll go over the brushes because everybody seems to be very uh, preoccupied with that uh, for that reason, I'm going to take the Spatter 14 brush that comes with Photoshop. I'm going to go over here to Transfer, set that on, and Pen Pressure, Pen Pressure. You'll notice if one of them's off, you get the fade, but it's not as, uh, you know, faded, I guess, to the edge. So with both of those set on, you get kind of this nice, soft effect, like so. Uh, then you can control that also with your opacity. I usually put it at about 80% to resemble some kind of sketch line. And you see I don't even have shape dynamics on there. I'll just control the shape dynamics or the size by using the bracket keys on the keyboard. So so that being said, and I've got more videos on digital painting if you need to know some more of the basics like that. Uh, but what I like about this process, you know, using this off-white kind of uh, paper, and I'll, I'll maybe make, make this background available on my DeviantArt. Uh, so check in the link below for that if you want. But it's really easy to make. It's just a bunch of overlaid brushes of dab, speckle, highlight, you know, all in this uh, earth tone kind of effect to give you what looks like to me some kind of parchment paper, you know. And the beauty of that is this right here. Say we'll, we'll just do a quick, uh, I'll do a quick weapon because I think this is what I might show you today as far as a conceptual design. You know, say we're doing a sword, you know, a lot of these swords in the, the video games or whatever are kind of always these crazy uh, shapes, you know. So let's try something like that. We'll just do a wild looking multi-edge sword. Um, but the beauty of using this, this technique is that you sketch it out over top of this uh, toned paper. And, you know, we'll do like the, the blade comes down. Maybe it, it's got the base attachment. Uh, I think this is called the hilt or the uh, the handle connects, and then of course we got to do something, you know, crazy with that and maybe dangerous. Yeah, we'll do one side higher than the other. One side's got a back piece that would probably cut the uh, the wielder, but we don't have to worry about that because this is, you know, we're imagining stuff up here. Who cares if really hurts the guy holding it, right? And then for the handle, which is actually looks like it would be more of a, uh, a shorter blade with the way I did the proportions here, so I might have to fix that. And I'm just trying to get a rough kind of idea down, and then I can go back and refine it and adjust it. And that's also why I wanted to show you those pieces that I saved up top there. If I see a certain element that looks cool, and that I can work with. I'll I'll save that. You know, obviously we're in a digital environment. It's really to save out a layer or whatever. Uh, and set that off to the side because I might be able to reference that and and you know embellish upon it or whatever and make something cool later on. So you know you want to be very free flowing in the uh, conceptual stage like this and you know not beat yourself up. You know, even though my blade looks pretty uh, out of proportion, it looks more like a glorified knife. Alright, I want to make sure I'm on a separate layer here, so I'll lasso select that, control X, or command X, command V to copy paste on a Mac, control if you're on a PC, you can tell I'm still stuck in my PC days. Probably because I pretty much was raised on PCs, so switching over to Mac in my mid-30s was uh, a big jump. Sorry, getting a little personal there. Okay, Control T will allow you to quick select, and you know, then Control D will deselect. All right, so here's our basic 
kind of ugly sword knife thingy. Uh, I'll take the soft erase that I like to do so much. Soft erase that down. Oh, too much. Sorry. Soft erase that down like so. And generally what I do here is if I have like a certain area that bothers me, you know, I'll start erasing that down. Uh, and I talk about that in a lot of my other sketch videos, obviously. So forgive me if I'm being a little bit too, uh, you know, if I touch on the same subjects over and over. It's just because I feel that they, you know, are a valid part of the process. So, you know, I erase down that part I didn't like. I try to... Every time I redraw over, I try to add something. I mean, even if it's nothing major, sometimes I'm just cleaning up the line work too. So, you know, if you see me and it looks like I'm just doing the same thing, you know, maybe I am, or maybe I'm just, you know, clean, you know, cleaning it up for the next stage of the process. And I don't know if that looks much better, but we'll roll with it for now. Maybe have this. I'm almost, almost like picturing this as if I had to take it into, um, I do a bit of 3D modeling now, and I, you know, might even take this into ZBrush and model it, I don't know. Um, I'm getting to the point where I'm feeling a little more comfortable with that software, and I want to start building more and more of my uh, my concepts here. So I'm, I might do that. Um, don't hold me to it, though, because I get so busy with all these different things and trying to keep my professional work going out the door that I uh, I don't always get to you know do every idea that I have uh, in which case I would have a lot of stuff pinned to the walls because I just have I'm kind of you know in my own opinion I guess in my own regard I'm an idea person I'm always coming up with uh, you know the next thing and this and that and whatever I don't know if they're the greatest ideas you know in my world they are whatever but um, yeah, I'm always coming up with ideas and I'm always getting sidetracked with the next thing that I want to create and, you know, do. But I think that's good. It keeps the, uh, the process going. You know, you want to always be thinking of, uh, you know, new ideas and keep yourself excited about what you're doing with this stuff. Okay, so there's our basic, you know, sword shape. Again, I put some spikes in a, pro in a place where they would probably hurt the uh, person wielding it. So that's, uh, that's pretty smart on my part. But I'm, that's why I'm an artist and not an engineer, I guess. So, let's see. Um, I guess I'll fill in a little bit more of the idea, you know, like some shading, some textural value, you know, some quick hints as to what, you know, obviously this is, I'm trying to make this look a bit specular. So I'm putting a little bit of these little glare lines and stuff to show that. And then the, the hilt or the handle, I guess, would be this part. I want to look, uh, you know, like it's got a grip to it. Um, you know, this cross pattern is like cheating. You know, it's a really easy kind of way out to make stuff like that. And then you can get in there and you can shade each one of these little specks like this and make like a cool, you know, scale effect. But it, it's really cheesy. So what I'll do is I'll just do a little bit more than that. And I'll just do like the, uh, maybe, the maybe this is made from some kind of, dragon scales or something cool so I'll just do that uh, and then what I could do there if I wanted to really speed this up is grab each little piece and remember this is more of the sketch part so I can get away with this right now and I can just copy these and the beauty of scales uh, I probably got these saved in multiple places already on my system but the beauty of scales is you know once you got a couple you can kind of move them around and finagle them in there and you know make more beauty of Photoshop you know that you can get away with doing stuff like this and, it, and then I should be actually um, every time I copy it I should be merging it down um, what it does two things actually it allows you to not get too crazy with the layers but also it allows you to speed up and uh, um, make your tileable pattern a lot faster but the reason I am kind of doing it like this is because I don't want to get too much in the way of the shape of the the handle here and this doesn't have to be perfect because I'm still in the design portion of this let's try something like that control E and if you see on the right now they're dropping down so it's a quick way to merge them down you just gotta make sure you don't go past your initial sketch and merge onto other layers 
like even this I don't want it to be on the sword so I'll go right before the sword and stop it's like oh. oh the first one was on the sword there we go okay so I'll just take that just raise that down and better yet I'll just take this off to the side which would have probably what I should have did in the first place hold alt and move and it gives you a, another version and this is another cool little thing I'll show you say I gotta fill in this piece I can grab the selection the lasso select grab it like that move it by hitting the X or box select move it over you gotta grab inside of it and I just put it over top of part of this pattern it's not gonna be perfect but it's fine control X control V now it gave me just that little piece that pops right back in there and I didn't do it right because it's pretty ugly but you see the point control T maybe I can just wedge that in there try to make the line disappear there yeah no you still see it okay bad example scratch that one how about this let me go back try it again so I know it does work I just didn't do it right Zoom in a little bit further. I'll go right to the very edge of these lines. Maybe that's what I did wrong. And make sure I'm over top of this layer. Yep. Control X, Control V. Yeah, a little better. Still pretty bad. Goodness. Okay. And this is probably where I should edit this out, but I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna take this, delete this layer. Sorry for wasting your time. Go back and do it again. And this time I'm going to start off on a new layer my little scale pattern. I'll just go to the side with it. Okay, now hold Alt, drag, move over, and make my tileable pattern. And then what I'll do is right here I'll fix anything that's not as tileable or whatever. So now let's try it. still off a bit. Transform warp. Okay, good enough. Alt, drag. If you see there, I actually overlaid it a bit. I'll erase that down. Just where it overlapped. Control E to merge down. Alt, move down one last time. Overlap it a bit. Erase. Yeah. So at any rate, this that shouldn't have been nearly as painful as it was to do that. And it's just a you know a basic area it doesn't I could have just drew it all in there and probably saved time on that one but um, and it didn't come out the greatest but generally that will save you time and one of the ways that that can save you a tremendous amount of time is when you're not, when, you know when you're bored and you know you just don't feel like working on a piece or something do some of the uh, tileable patterns like that do them in full detail because you can always uh, condense them down you can't upscale them and digital you know they'll get all pixelated or whatever um so there's our sword partially and uh and then save things like that you know dragon scales rock textures whatever and then you can pull it in as you need it so okay so now for the blade i want to make it look a little bit bezeled so i'll draw like this inner line to it like so to the point i basically bring that up bring this down 
bring that to the point. It's almost like we're looking right at the very side of the the sword, you know, it's which, you know, a lot of times for concept work, you're going to draw the very side, the very front, you know, maybe the very top, things like that, depending on what it's what it's for. Um, and it's really nice to be able to do that and then when you do take it into something like ZBrush or whatever, uh, it gives you great reference points to create it in that that third dimension. So it's really cool. Okay, and then, you know, whether or not I want to give it a little bit of shadows. Now, the other cool thing that's nice to do on this kind of parchment paper look is hit X. You see I got black and white over here. Reverse that and fill in some of the white. You can see I already did that on my other characters here. And what's neat about doing this, it's a really quick way to give you a more uh, dimensional look on your piece. And it doesn't cost you a lot of time. You know, it's just a real kind of quick way to kind of give it that next level of, of depth. You know, you see I can paint in a little bit more of my highlights here. Um, it's all very fast. You know, I can run a highlight across these, you know, scales, hit a few of them with the little speck, a little highlight off to the one side, you know, all that cool bounce light stuff, you know. I kind of go crazy with my highlights, so I gotta, I gotta be careful not to overdo it. And, you know, it gives you that, you know, kind of dimensional look. It's It's got the background showing through. You can see it a little bit better on a darker surface there if you want. And as quickly as that, we've got, you know, just a, a brief kind of conceptual element, you know. Um, and you want to get in the habit of making stuff like that because then it's like, okay, you know, I want some cool swords. I want some cool guns. Like I did up here, you know, I want some creepy looking legs and you know I started mounting her to the back of this character and whatever and that's essentially just how you play around with the ideas and get them to you know the next stage of refinement and you can take them from there and fully digital paint them um, and do whatever so at any rate I just wanted to show you that real quick I thought it'd be fun to do and uh, sorry I had such a problem with the handle there I don't know what my deal was not enough coffee I guess so uh, let me know what you'd like to see in the future. Um, hopefully this video has helped you. And if you want a copy of this background, I'll make it available on my DeviantArt, which is ramstudios1.deviantart. So you can find it there. There'll be a, a link in the section below. And yeah, like, subscribe, share if you don't mind. It helps me progress the channel and keep coming back at you each week with new content. So thanks very much for watching. We'll talk to you soon. Keep drawing. Keep having fun. Take care.